why. So let's start from using the calf muscle. This is a very common way of uh, approaching the pedal and uh, there are a few reasons why. First of all, this is a way to deal with the spring. The spring is an external force that um, we have to deal with and it's kind of like limiting, uh, especially when we have to work with like ankle motion. So articulations are very, very small muscles that cannot sustain a lot of fatigue. Uh, so usually we feel like this kind of like losing control and so a way to kind of uh, uh, deal with that losing control is to press the beater down start in this kind of position which requires you to engage the calf muscle a lot and so we have this approach this kind of kills the, um, the spring uh, thing but it also kind of allows you if you have a very tight spring to with very little motion so very little effort in controlling the pedal to have like a very fast um, single strokes for, for this reason we basically this is actually what I call the constant release and I know a lot of people talk about the constant release as the heel toe but in my opinion this is basically pressing and then releasing pressure constantly <laughs> Uh, so I, I don't understand how um, the other one would be the constant release it doesn't matter how you call it but anyway this is basically what happens is uh, it, that's that you press the leg down uh, using the calf muscle a lot and then by releasing it uh, releasing the pressure you create this kind of like um, motion I call it like a nervous motion um, that allows you to play these single strokes. Another reason why this might be uh, something that spontaneously happen other than dealing with the pressure of the spring is because a lot of drummers tend to keep to sit very close to the stool the, um, to the pedal and so this is kind of like their position already as they're kind of like raising the leg they don't have a lot of space to use the shin muscles so of course we kind of like uh, grab habits based on these details like we sit in a certain way and so then we try to figure out things out from the positions that we have maybe without even knowing why um, and so it kind of happens this thing this is it's a very kind of like simple reason um, but it's another reason for why a lot of drummers develop this this way of approaching the pedal um, basically we have to think of the leg and the ankle um, like they form an angle and if the leg it's basically already let's say this is the part of the knee it's already kind of like over the uh, level of the ankle or almost then when you raise the the ankle uh, when you raise the foot the angle that's here it's already there's already a lot of tension like if we report this angle with having the leg a little bit more bent uh, upward like in front the same angle would have our foot like going all the way up okay so this is if we sit in this way this kind of like angle that we have when we raise our uh, toes it's it would be kind of this angle okay so I hope this is making sense but basically this is what I'm talking about the leg is in this position so we raise the toes and it has this angle but if we see the leg in this position more or more straight there's a lot of effort in raising the toes so that's another reason why like when we play in this way we might have the feeling of having a lot of control because always because of the same reason that we kind of kill the the spring work uh, I mean taking 
advantage of the spring work, but we kind of work against it because this is all like pressure. There's a lot of, I feel a lot of tension in the toes, a lot of tension in the calves. Um, and that's also when drummers are like, oh, you have to build the muscles to play fast double bass drum. My opinion, that's uh, why don't you go to the gym and develop muscles at that point? That's always the question that I ask. It's way more efficient to go to the gym rather than putting weights or uh, doing 30 minutes of this kind of exercises. But um, I'll, I'll tell my, uh, my preference at the end of the video. So um, these are the main, mainly the two reasons why. So dealing with the spring tension or the position of the leg that allows us to do a very small motion because of how much the angle between the leg and the f raising the foot happens um the, the the possibility of of motion that we have okay so you can try this at home if you uh just move the seat a little bit backward or just try it on the pavement do this and then move it forward and do this you will feel how the foot from doing this basically it doesn't need to raise the toes so much but it's basically a, a less um, there's less effort in doing this than than this. This requires you. There's creates some tension here. So these are the two uh, reasons why th a lot of people end up using this technique. Um, the good thing about this technique is that it allows you to have to deal and have the f the control of the uh, of. Uh, fast single strokes um, the and so to deal with the spring tension and maybe also with the balance because you can put the weight of the the body on on your feet that actually helps you to create the pressure the bad things about this technique uh, are that you have very little dynamic you relate a lot on the trigger which means you relate a lot on the tuning or on the pedal setting and all that those things and when you relate a lot on the gear it's always you're very vulnerable because as something goes wrong you will have a hard time getting through that gig get, getting through that situation it creates to me it's always created a lot of um, uh, um, mental stress you know I, I, I never wanted to have that approach because I, I relate too much on the gear I relate too much on my body on the muscles um, if I th this is also like another bad part of this is that if you use uh, your muscles a lot then you might have a great gig one day and then f the next day you cannot play the same in the same way because your muscles need to recover because you've worked so much, your muscles, exactly as when you go to the gym. So um, this is the bad part of it. Um, and another bad part is, uh, yeah, the, the, the volume and the, um, the control of the uh, spaces between the notes, okay? So I cannot kind of like have a fluent Uh, I can all either play very fast usually with this technique so I have little control of my body and that's another thing that I don't like so there's a lot of effort there's a little control of the body there's a lot of fatigue for me to deal with the pedal um, and, and uh, relating too much on the gear I don't like this approach for these reasons Hey there, if you're liking the videos that I'm uploading, you should check these videos on jamespaindrums.com in which I upload a more in-depth version of the videos with multicam views, PDFs, so that you have everything written down and you don't have to always memorize everything. There's going to be polynome playlists where I've basically created playlists that you can um, follow, speed up, slow down, just play one part of whatever I'm playing, just the snare, just the bass drum. And it's all through an app so you can take it on your phone with you in your um, practice room and coaching videos which means you will have my voice reminding you what to focus on either in balance on your right hand on your left foot based on where you are in the exercises 
so that it's like if I'm gonna be there with you in the room while you're practicing. So there's gonna be a bunch of extra content there that might help you out practicing and improving faster.